Hey, this is Anjali and today we are going to do searching in an area. Like in the last lecture, we did how we can declare arrays in C and how can we make a simple program using arrays. So today we are going to discuss how can we search an element in an array. So for searching in an array, we have two options possible. One is linear search and the second one is binary search. Now, why they are named like this? Like the name linear says that we are going to check in a line. We are going to check elements one by one. That's why it's linear. And binary means two. So when our list is divided into two parts every time, we call it binary search. You'll get it in a better way when I'll explain the concept to you. So searching is one of the major operations we can perform on arrays. So we'll start with the linear search first. Let's say we have an array of size 6. So I have 6 elements in it positioned from 0 to 5. At position 0 we have our first element then on 1 second and then 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th. So this is my initial array. Now let's uh, find out some number in this array. Let's say I have to search for 28 in this array. So if I have to search for 28, how linear search would work? Linear search would first check whether the number at position 0 is equal to 28 or not. If it is, it's found. If it is not, it will check with the number at position 1. Then if it is found, good enough. If it's not, it will check for position 2 and so on till the number is not found. As we get the number, we get the result that the number is found at so and so position. But if you check with all the positions and there is no match, that means number is not there. So I'll show you how does it work. So first of all, I have to search for 28. So it is checked with position 0. There we have 34, which is not equal to 28. So it's not a match. Then it checks with 23. That's at position 1. Again, it's not equal. So it's not a match. Then it checks with 45. That's at position 2. It's not a match again. Then it checks with position 3. And there we have 28. So it's found. So we get the number over here. If we are using this thing for a single occurrence. So we stop over here. We get the result that we find the number at position 4. And it will not work further. I said 4 because from user's point of view it's 4. But the index is 3 in programming. So we got the number. This is how linear search works. Now let's take another example. We try another number and that number be 40. Now as a human being obviously I can see 40 is not there but now we have to see how computer operates this thing. So we have 0 position having 34 which is not equal to 40. So it checks with the next number that's at position 1, 23 that's again not equal to 40. Then it checks with position 2, that's not 40. It checks with position 3, that is also not matching with 40. Then we check with position 4, that is also not a match. And finally it checks with the last position, that's position 5. Since there was no match when I compared with all the possible positions, I conclude that the number is not there in the list. You cannot check with the first position and say the number is not found. I have to check with all the positions and it is not there at any of the positions that says that number is not there in the array. So that's how linear search works. So on average, if we say like uh, if the number is not found, it will compare n times because if n is the number of elements, the loop will go for n times and the average number of comparisons we can say is n upon 2 depending upon the thing that sometimes you can find the number at early position, sometimes in the middle and sometimes the number is not there in the list. So complexity of linear search is n. The big O notation of linear search would be n. Now this was the thing that how linear search works. Now let's see how the program works for linear search. Now if I have to make the program work, I have to see how does it work. So this is the code for linear search in C language. So what we have done is we have initialized an array with 10 elements. I have given different numbers in this. Then num is the variable in which I'll ask the user like which number user wants to search in the array. And I have given a message that enter a number to be searched which should be in the limit 1 to 100. So user enters a number in the variable num. So once you get the variable in, uh, you get the value in variable num, now we have to compare it with the array elements. 
To compare it with the array elements, we take a loop because you have to do the same thing with each of the array elements. So we take a loop which starts from 0 and goes for less than 10. That means it will go up to 9. So when i is 0, it checks if ai is equal to num. That is if a0 is equal to num. If it is, number is found at the position we print it and we break the loop. Since we are doing it for single occurrence, we assume that number cannot be there multiple times. So as soon as you get the number, you break the loop. Then i becomes 1. It checks 1 less than 10, then 2, 3, 4 and so on. If number is found, it will break in between. But if the number is not found, it will come out of the loop and it will check. If x is still 0, that means the loop never broke. So all the iterations completed. Because you can see here, I have given x is equal to 1 before the break statement. So if the number is found and it prints the position, it makes x as 1 and then only, then only it breaks the loop. But if x is still 0, that means it never turned 1. That means you never got the number. So if x is still 0, we print that the number not found. So this is how linear search works for single occurrence. Many of us make a mistake. That is, you put this loop and then here you write if ai is equal to num. And over here we write an else number not found. Never do that because if you will do this, it will print not found if the number is not matching to position 0. It will print not found if it is not matching to position 1. And if it matches at position 2, it will print number found, found at position. So be careful. The else will not be given over here. We can check for number being not there in the array only once we are out of the loop. So we are out of the loop and we check that it was never there in the array. So we print number not found. This was for the search when we know that the number is going to be only once in the error. But now I can have a linear search program for multiple occurrences. For multiple occurrences, I just have to make a slight change. I still have the array initialized and now I don't have break. What is the thing is that we have the loop which is comparing the numbers. So if ai is equal to num, I print the position and I increase the value of x which is initially 0 and I don't have a break. So if my number is there at two, three positions, it will count all those. And at the end, we'll check if x is still 0, it say number not found. But if it is not, it says number found for the given number of times we got it. Let's run the program and see how the result comes. So let's say I want to search for 60 in this array. So I run this and I press 60. So we get this, so 2, 5, 10, it was there at position 2, 5 and 10, so total it's found for 3 times. I want to run it again and let's say this time I will search for 40 which is twice in my array. So I search for 40, it's twice. Then I want to search for a number which is not there, let's say 55. It's not there in the array so it says number not found. Similarly, we could have executed the program for linear search and it helps you to search for an element just for one occurrence. So that is linear search and how linear search works. Now comes binary search. Binary search is a technique which is much faster in comparison to linear search and we use it for numbers where we know that the numbers are already in sorted order. So when you have to apply binary search we have a precondition that my elements must be in sorted order, either ascending or descending. In this example, we are taking numbers in ascending order. So number to be searched is compared with the middle element in the array. So we check if the number is found at the middle position. If it is found, it's good. If it is not, then since the array is sorted, I know either the number would be greater than the middle position or the number would be less than the middle position. If the number is greater, obviously it does not lie in the first half. So I will continue only with the second half of the list. And if I know that the number is less than the middle point, then it's quite obvious that it lies in the first half of the list. So basic thing is, if the list is divided into half every time a match is not found. So if you don't get a match at the middle position, you'll continue with either of the half, second half or the first half of the list. So every time my list gets divided into half, 
For example, if you're working with linear search and I have thousand elements in my array, that would approximately compare thousand elements if the number is not found. If uh, it's found early, it would be less than that. So on average, 500 comparisons would be required. But the maximum complexity would be 1000. But in case of binary search, if I have 1000 numbers and I'm looking for a number, even if worst case thing is the number is not there in the list. So in that case also, in first step, I'll be left with 500 numbers. In second step, I'll be left with 250 numbers. In third steps, I'll be left with 125. In fourth, 62. In fifth step, 31. In sixth steps, 15. In seventh step, just seven numbers. And in eighth steps, three numbers. In ninth steps, one number. And in tenth, I'll surely get to know whether the number is there or not. So for thousand numbers, you get the result for sure in ten steps. Whereas in linear search, it might take thousand comparisons to find out if the number is not there in the list. So that's how. The linear and binary search concept is different. So now let's see how binary search works with an example. Before we go for an example, let me show you a brief algo for this. So here we take a variable beginning, which we set as zero. That's the position of the first number. Then we take end as max minus one, which should be the position of the last number. In this example, I've taken an array of 10 elements. So beginning should be zero and end should be nine. Then we repeat the following steps till I have beginning less than equal to end. I find out the mid position, which should be beginning plus end divided by two. Then we check that the element at position mid is equal to the number or not. If it is equal, we say it's found and we stop. We don't repeat further. Otherwise, we check if the number is greater than a mid. That means it lies in the second half. If it lies in the second half, we will change the beginning. Beginning should be one ahead than the middle position. That's why we write beginning is equal to mid plus one. And if the number is less than that, that means the number lies in the first half. In that case, we have to make end as mid minus one. So end should come back one position before the middle element. Let's say we want to search the number 54 in this list. Now, if I have to search for 54, how would it work? Initially, beginning is zero, end is nine. So the mid comes to be 0 plus 9 upon 2, that is 4. So it's 4 and here is my position 4 and I have 40 at that, but we're looking for 54. So A4 is 40, which is not equal to 54. Then we check if 54 is greater than 40. Yes, it is. In this situation, we had to do beginning as mid plus 1. So beginning will become 5. That means now the list will start from here and till here. So we're going to search the number further starting from index 5 till index 9 because end remains the same. So beginning has become 5 but end is still 9. So we go for the second iteration. It checks whether beginning is less than or equal to end. Yes, 5 is less than or equal to 9. So in this case, mid is calculated again and now the mid is 5 plus 9 upon 2. That is 14 upon 2, 7 and at A7 luckily we get 54. That ends our search over here. We get the number 54 at position 7. So we stop the loop and print that the number is found at the given position. So in two iterations, we got our number, which would have taken number of iterations if we would have searched it using linear search. So that's how binary search works in searching a number. Now, what happens if the number is not there in the list? If the number is not there in the list, you will get a point when beginning will exceed end. So value of beginning will become greater than the value of position n that says that number is not there in the list. Let's take an example for that. Say I want to search for 32. So initially beginning is 0, end is 9. Mid comes to be 4. At a4 I have 40 which is not equal to 32. Then we check if 32 is less than 40. Yes, it's not greater, it's less. So mean the number lies in the first half. So we change the end. End becomes mid minus 1, that is 3. So beginning remains 0 and end becomes 3 and we have to search further from 0 to 3. Okay, in the next step, this is your beginning and the end should be at 3. Then number to be searched is 32. Okay, there's a mistake here. End should have been 3. So 0 plus 3 upon 2 will be 1. So at 1, we have 23. It's again not found. 
So like repeating this way, we'll get a position where your beginning becomes greater than n and that says that number is not there in the list. So we say number not in the list. So whenever we get this thing that beginning goes beyond n, the number is not there in the list. And since the list is divided into half every time step by step, the complexity of binary search is calculated as log n. Now, let's see how the program works. So, I'll show you how binary search program executes. So, this is our binary search program. I have initialized an array in increasing order. Then I have taken beginning as 0, end as 9. Then enter a number to be searched. We take the number and then here I have while loop. I don't have for because for we put where we know that how many times we have to repeat. So the more convenient loop I found here was while. So I'm taking while. While beginning is less than equal to end, we find the mid. That is beginning plus end divided by 2. Then we check if a mid is equal to num. If it is equal, number found at position percentage t and mid plus 1. So we print the position and we break the loop. The loop will not continue once the number is found. But if number is not there, we check if number is greater than a mid. If it is, we change the beginning. Beginning becomes mid plus 1. That means we continue with the second half of the list. Otherwise, we change end, which becomes mid minus 1. That continues with the first half of the list. Now, if beginning is greater than end, then we print number not found. This we check after coming out of the loop. Once the loop is over, we check why the loop is over. Because loop can get over because of two conditions. One, this condition becomes false. And second, this condition becomes true. So we need to check for the false of this thing, that if beginning is greater than end, means this one became false, that shows the number is not there in the list. Now let's execute this program. This is my array. Let's search for 43, which is at position 5. So I enter 43. It says number found at position 5. Then let's search for 78. That's at position 9. So you can search for any number like this. Now let's search for 50. It's not there. So it says number not found. So that's how binary search program works. So that's how a program works. So that's all about linear search and binary search. Hope you understood the thing. There was a problem in the indexes in the not found example of binary search. So try solving it once of your own. In case of any doubts, do write in the comment section. And for downloading these programs, I'll provide you a link and you can download the programs from there. I hope it was useful. If you found it useful, so do like and share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you keep getting the updates. Thank you.